So in an earlier video, I talked about different biases that people have that can make it difficult for us to work with information where we focus too much on some information, whether it's a vividness bias, um, sometimes there's like a halo effect where I, I sort of have this assumption that this information or this source um, is, is, is really valuable and, and correct, or maybe a, a horn effect where I, I discount information because of the source or because of um, something about where it came from, that putting information together can be, can be really challenging. And so as I've been kind of looking through research on intelligence analysis, um, I, I found the discussion by Robert M. Clark really useful for this because Clark recognizes that you're oftentimes sitting there with a big pile of information. Some of it is good, some of it is not good, and we have to sort of figure out how to put that together in a way that's not cherry picking um, certain bits of information that, that maybe makes the most out of what's there. And Clark suggests two different techniques for doing this. One is Bayesian updating, um, and the other is using Wigmore diagrams. And I had done a little bit of work on, on Bayesian um, updating in the context of intelligence analysis, and I have a video that talks about how to do that or, or how to maybe use Bayesian reasoning. Uh, but Clark is, I don't wanna say skeptical, but recognizes the challenge of doing that. And so the idea with Bayesian updating is that you are starting with a initial probability and expectation, um, which is your, your prior. Um, and then you have a new piece of information that comes in and we wanna calculate the posterior. That's the probability of A line B, which means the probability that A is true conditional on B, observing this new piece of information. And we calculate that using the probability of observing B if A is true times the probability of A being true divided by the probability of B of this piece of information existing. And from a mathematical perspective, this is really elegant. There's an entire field of statistics that's based upon this. And when uh, Bayes introduced this to the you know Royal Mathematical Society back in 1680 or so, um, they thought it was fantastic as a way to think about how to bet and gamble. Uh, but in terms of intelligence analysis, there's some real limitations. And that oftentimes the kind of information we have isn't easily expressed in probabilities of things being true. We do it, um, but it's a little bit of a subjective um, effort and that we're sort of putting together the information we have and kind of getting sort of a, a rough sense of what those probabilities look like. And so doing the math and calculating it out seems maybe not like the best way to go. And so I was kind of pleased to see Clark come to the, the same conclusion that I've been coming to, which is uh, there's, an inter there's some interesting insights in terms of the reasoning you can get from Bayesian updating, but as a tool for actually working with information, it's not always the best for an intelligence analyst. Uh, and so I was interested in this, this Wigmore diagram concept, which Clark talked about as well, uh, this is something that's been around for a really long time. It comes from the legal profession. It's a way of organizing information um, in sort of like a, a trial sense of, of a prosecution and a defense, presenting different information uh, and evidence of different weights. And the idea is that you can map out an entire argument structure um, using these sort of little diagram things. And therefore you can render down and distill what constitutes a good argument, or you can find like where are the weak spots where you don't have the information you need to really justify a particular position. So I thought that was interesting. Um, Clark says that, you know, there, there's a lot that could be done to make Wigmore diagrams more user-friendly and that that would constitute a, a useful contribution to the intelligence community. And so I, I kind of pinged on that and said, wow, that would be fantastic. I, sh I should look at that. Uh, turns out others have gotten there well before me. Um, and I found this paper by Chalmish um, and colleagues from 2011 that does exactly what Clark was asking for, like create a computer program to help make this work really well. But in doing that process, um, Chalmish and his colleagues ran up against the age old problem. You have multiple pieces of information. They're a varying value. Some of it is confirming, some of it is contradictory. How do we weigh and balance that? And the solution that they came up with is a qualitative one in which we sort of look at each piece of information and we decide if the information is strong or medium or weak or, or doubtful. And then we can sort of aggregate it together using these tables, right? So there's a table for aggregating uh, corroborative uh, 
corroborative information. So if you have information that's doubtfully supporting a position and you add an additionally um, more information that's doubtful, the end result um, is still doubtful. Uh, if you have strong information, you add more information that confirms the information stays strong or your conclusion stays strong. Um, medium strength information can aggregate up and become strong information. Okay, so there's sort of a an additive effect, but it, it doesn't always progress in the most linear way. When you have contradictory information, right? So doubtful information and doubtful information that contradicts, it's still pretty doubtful. If you have strong information and then you find strong information that contradicts that, that creates sort of a weak um, evidence situation that they kind of cancel each other out. So there's a, a different kind of dynamic going on. And I thought that this makes sense to me intuitively. Like I can look at any of those different cells and say, yeah, I see how these things aggregate together, but printing out these various tables and kind of having them on my desk as I'm thinking about pieces of information still seemed a little clunky to me. And I thought maybe there's an easier way to take the logical insights of Bayesian, Bayesian reasoning to take these tables and reorganize them in a way that's a little bit more intuitive to work with. And so the way that I thought that we could maybe do that is with what's called the bush Mosteller learning mechanism or algorithm um, that was developed in the early days of, of computer science back in 1955, where Bush and Mosteller sort of want to build a rudimentary machine learning algorithm in which if you get supportive information, it increases the confidence or increases the propensity of your algorithm to, to believe something or to, to have a predisposition in one way. And if there's negative information coming in, it's supposed to decrease that. But the learning process follows this S-curve shape and um, that S-curve shape ends up mapping pretty well with those tables that were developed by Chalmers and, and colleagues. And so I wanna kind of highlight how this works. And so on the X-axis, I have zero to 10 arbitrary scale. It could be zero to 100 or it could be zero to one, whatever you wanna work with. Um, and then on the Y-axis, there is um, my level of confidence in a particular conclusion. So uh, at the top, it's, you know, I, I am 100% convinced like this is absolutely correct. And at the bottom, it's like, no, I have a lot of evidence against this conclusion. And I'm going to start sort of in the middle of that process. Um, I haven't started with any information yet, so I'm going to put a, start that little dot there in the middle. Um, and when I bring in a piece of information, um, I'm going to rank that piece of information in terms of how strong I think it is. If it's confirming information, um, it'll be a positive number. If it's disconfirming information, it'll be a negative number. Uh, and so I'll start with a, a medium piece of information that, that supports my, my belief. Um, I'll make medium pieces of information worth about 2.5. I'll make strong information worth about five. Weak is maybe one. Doubtful is maybe 0.5. Again, those are kind of arbitrary numbers. You could make a piece of information, you know, seven if you thought it was like really, really compelling. Um, but those numbers are expressed in terms of the scale for the x axis. And so if I'm starting with a medium piece of information, I'm going to move 2.5 units over to the right on the x axis which would move me along the sort of S-curve line up to that new um, black dot sort of near the top, right? I've, I've gained confidence in, in what I'm, um, in, in my belief because of that information being added in. Now, if I add in another piece of information that is contradictory and is quite strong, um, I'm gonna move five units to the left um, on my x-axis, which slides me down the s-curve to um, that new third dot that's kind of there at the bottom, right? That strong evidence has more than countered the medium evidence that I brought to the table to begin with. And if I add in a third piece of evidence, um, a piece of evidence that's weak or doubtful, but supports position A, it nudges me up a little bit, right? So now I have um, strong evidence against, I have medium evidence for, and I have weak evidence for, and I'm sort of knowing where I'm at on that S curve, I can say, I actually, it seems pretty unlikely that my initial assumption is, is true. The evidence aggregates out to be kind of against that. And using this S curve seems like a fairly intuitive way to kind of move back and forth um, and to kind of say, well, there's this piece of information that pushes us this way, this piece of information pushes us that way. And we don't have to keep track of sort of the overall, um, level of support because that 
is captured by where we are on the S curve, which I think is an interesting way to kind of aggregate information together. Um, and I'd be really curious if, if folks um, try using this technique, if they find it useful. Um, I've been working with Bush Moss Stellar Learning Algorithms for nearly 15 years now. So it's kind of intuitive in how I think about um, information and, and aggregating information. Um, but I'd really be curious to see if other folks find it useful as well. Uh, and if you do, please let me know. I'm, I'm always uh, curious for feedback and I'd love to hear uh, what folks think about these videos and if they find them helpful. So thank you very much. And I'll be back with more information on aggregating um, data in a future video.